Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to a new episode of Empowering Voices. Today, our special guest is Ruchika. Welcome, welcome. We are very happy to have you here. And uh, she will tell us all she does, uh, reading about her bio, I realized we have many common points uh, professionally, and uh, I'm very excited to know more about what you uh, do. The words we will use today to start our conversation and that resonate with our uh, guests are no matter what. If you are watching, I can show you the one of the t-shirts that says no matter what, and and uh, don't forget, you can always find them on my website um, whenever you want. So welcome. Uh, without any further ado, I want to know everything about you. Thank you so much for having me today, Mara. So let's jump in. Yes. So tell uh, us. No matter what is something that resonates uh, throughout my uh, personal life and professional as well. And it binds both my businesses, uh, Laboni, the essence of elegance, which is about shawls, like I'm wearing, and my coaching business, uh, Elegance of Living. So as you can see, the word elegance is common in both because I feel that um, elegance in living and your style should be effortless. Yes, yes. Um, now, no matter what stands for me to be the inner power present in your day-to-day -day living. Mm -hmm. So that no matter what you're doing, it could be like cooking or, or working on a presentation or driving, every part of your life should be touched by your inner power beauty and your inner power. That's a very positive message, actually. Uh, if we can make it a habit, it would be life changing, I suppose. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, to kind of build on this, this concept, what I feel is that um, our inner power is something that we are born with. It doesn't have to come from outside. Now our life and our practices um, helps us to either make it a part of our life or not. Mm -hmm. So it's I'm a choice, for, definitely. Yes, exactly. It's a choice. And you're completely in charge. Anytime you do feel helpless and say, oh, but you know, I didn't have the time or my um, children don't let's listen to me or when I meditate, I go to sleep or anything of that sort. You're trying to put the reason onto something else and... Um, I'm not saying you're wrong for doing that. We all do that. I do it too sometimes. But then I immediately question myself, what am I doing? Yeah. Just that question brings you back into being in charge of your power. Yeah, and taking your responsibilities. Um, yes. Because it, it has a positive and negative feeling, of course, because if you feel that you have a responsibility, you feel uh, sometimes overwhelmed. But at the same time, you are in charge. And that is freedom. Absolutely. Yes. Correct. Um, so, so that is where I live from personally and also work with my clients. Where, like, Look, you know, you've come to me because you can't do something on your own. My aim after you finished your sessions with me is that you feel empowered. You're going to step out almost as a coach to yourself. Yeah from coming to me feeling as a victim or helpless or out of control over some part of your life that you felt wasn't working. Yeah, just uh, let's remind our uh, audience, uh, you are a coach and uh, what's the name of, uh, uh, the, um, again, the name of your uh, business, um, coach business? So, my business goes by the name of Elegance of Living mm -hmm. and my website is Ruchika Handa. Okay, com. perfect. So yes. you were saying, uh, is, uh, are your client, uh, customers uh, mainly women or do yes. you work with men? Yeah. I have had uh, male clients. Uh, however, my uh, potential uh, clients are usually women. Yeah. And do you find that there are similar patterns in all your customers when they come to, to ask for help? Yes, to an extent, yes. 
the, the patterns, of course, the stories for each client are unique to them. Yeah, as are of all of us. However, uh, the underlying patterns are uh, arising from the similar reasons of, of feeling overwhelmed, drained, mm -hmm. and as if you're hustling, but you're not really feeling fulfilled yeah. from within. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I was, um, it, you use art as well. To, in this uh, process of uh, healing. Uh, actually, you use hand embroidery. So I was uh, very positively surprised because as you know, I love hand embroidery and I work with it. Can you tell us more um, why this choice and how you use it? Um, so I used to wear um, shawls like this because I am that shawl kind of a person, the kind of cozy and comfortable feeling when you are wrapped in it, when you're outside or even inside is to me just uh, like an embrace of uh, warmth and elegance. So people used to always admire it and they would always kind of say, uh, you you look so elegant mm -hmm. and the way you carry your shawls um, sort of sets you apart. Yeah. And inherently, I'm a simple dresser. So, and also raising three kids, like I did not really have the time yeah. or the inclination to put on very fancy um, fabrics or, or clothes, especially when they were young, yeah. uh, because I didn't want to feel upset or annoyed because my dress had been. You know, yeah, if any accident much. happened, so, yeah. <laughs> so I would wear uh, sturdy clothing um, and always just drape a shawl. Yeah. And if I had to, you know, change a diaper or feed my cloth, I would just take it off, put it aside exactly. and yeah. be happy and, and hands free. So it was important for me to feel comfortable in all elements and, and include my kind of lifestyle in my dressing style and still feel like special. Yeah, because uh, um, accessories have this power, right? I mean, uh, just one piece can change your comp outfit. I mean, you are you can wear just plain black clothes, and then a little touch up here changes completely and gives you that elegance you were talking yes, about. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yes. yes. And uh, actually, uh, you work with uh, artisans uh, in their own own uh, uh, countries and environment, and uh, you make sure that they are, uh, of course, treated well, and uh, they they work with their own pace. How do you keep this relationship? So <clears throat> the artisans uh, are from India because I'm originally from India, but now I'm uh, settled. <clears throat> excuse me. And I'm a Dutch national. Mm -hmm. So um, I always wanted to keep my connection with India. And when uh, uh, people sort of praise these collection of my personal shawls so much, I was like, hey, why not? And uh, the it's person- also a bit uh, to recover your roots, right? Yes. And uh, with, yes. Uh, with pride, of course. Yeah. Yes. So the agent, um, who's also a very highly gifted uh, craftsman, um, sort of became my uh, mentor and he taught me. And I knew that if I'm going to step into it, it was very important for me to have a direct connection with them rather than to just order over the phone. Um, so I did travel to Kashmir and oh, also wow. Lucknow, where these products are from. And I went to their homes. So what really struck a chord with me was that they have this inherent sense of pride and dignity about the art. Yeah. They don't have formal education mm -hmm. and they've just passed it down the generation. And yeah. maybe they are the fifth it's or the, the sixth tradition. generation now. Yeah. They're living in villages. And when I visited them about 10 years ago, they were looking at me as a person who had, I don't know, maybe come from a different planet. And when I was taking sh pictures and everything, they had never been photographed before. That's the kind oh, of wow. seclusion they were living mm -hmm, in. Mm -hmm. uh, so that- Although they were already working for yes. uh, international um, customers, I mean, yes. outside of India. Yeah. Oh. So I, I 
uh, have created a video that's called the hands behind the shawl. So even though these products have been worn for centuries, but it's always the hands behind the shawls that just remain that. Uh, yep. They are not brought into prominence as much. And now, of course, in the last 10, 15 years, it's it's changed completely. Yeah. You will enjoy knowing who the craftsman is. And even yep. businesses have made it far more transparent. So um, that has been my journey as a small business owner of, of uh, having just those few people supplying uh, and creating these uh, hand embroidered shawls for me. And you know that this whole uh, the, the uniqueness and uh, the uh, art and the feeling behind uh, their uh, or their connection with the shawl also added to my vision of behind Laponi, which is that allow your style also to uplift you. Yes. Why would you waste that aspect of your life? Yeah, that is one of my principles because uh, fashion is not, well, clothes in general are for, to protect uh, ourselves from weather or whatever. But also fashion is uh, not only the fancy stuff, but is uh, something to ex express your personality. So it's definitely much more than a piece of fabric. In end, if you have the handmade part, it has uh, even another element that is the energy that the artisan put in it. For me, handmade, um, I mean, you were talking about the hands working behind the scenes. Hands have such an amazing power because from raw materials, you create something. It's almost a magic uh, happening, really. And it's uh, really fascinating. And what I was, I was uh, looking around your website and your beautiful pieces. I noticed that there are many men. Yes, the majority are men doing yeah. these kind of jobs in India, right, because correct. I suppose the women are more at home to look after the house. Absolutely. I suppose that is the reason. Yes. While uh, in in, uh, in the Western world, I, I mean, they are exceptions in uh, I know because, of course, uh, uh, working on embroidery myself, I know just a few names really that pop up like this for men but the majority is more the granny uh, kind of uh, job <laughs> and um, yeah so it is and, and they do it of course uh, okay the, the um, quality of their skills is stunning it's really stunning you can see that they start very early uh, touching yes. any those uh, threads and creating. I mean, it's uh, part of themselves. Uh, what sometimes we uh, we say that uh, the Latin American people have the dance in their blood yeah. because they start yeah. very early. It's in India really hand embroidery and fabrics is like part part of life, everyday yes. life. So it's it flows. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. So natural. Uh, yes. It seems. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's beautiful that you have this um, personal relationship and it's always important to know the person behind, not only, of course, because you want to see how their working conditions, but because there's a different con uh, connection and they feel more appreciated, of course, um, and you understand all the work uh, that goes in there. Yes. To to talk to the world of absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Yes. You've put it very beautifully. I loved hearing you there. <laughs> <laughs> um so um uh you were mentioning um that uh, uh, talking more about your business um, as a coach, do you have normally uh, sessions one to one? Do you have groups? Do you have courses? What how does it work? I have a different uh, platter depending on what you want, because for some of us, we have, you know, progressed through life to a point where we are ready for a big step. Mm -hmm. But then there are at times where you want to just try something and see if it is for you or not. Sure. And however, you would like to benefit. So I have a range of uh, an hour session 
starting from about 35 euros going up to a three month session. Mm -hmm. If you're really looking in to commit to a deep transformation after which you know that, you know, you are going to, or uh, those goals and and dreams, which you would always uh, put an if against that, if I could, or if I would just disappears. Yeah. So it's 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 the entire range and it's up to you uh, as to what are you ready for. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, it, it, I love this uh, that if <laughs> disappears <laughs> because it's normally like um, uh, almost a nightmare in our everyday life or in our professional life. If this happened, I would do that. So there's never the right moment, it seems. And we tend to procrastinate and not to have our inner power coming out. So we definitely need your help. (laughs) And you were mentioning that you would like to offer something to our listeners. Yes. So there is this program that is very close to my heart because the Thriving in your relationships, no matter who you're with, is a 30-day program, which has two sessions, 75 minutes each. Mm -hmm. And um, that is a program which is priced at 299 euros. But for all you uh, listeners to Mara's podcast, if you just drop me a mail that will be in the social media details, you will be given a 10% discount. Um, forever you could be listening to it a year later it's you well are. that's amazing you are very uh, very generous we really thank you for that uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of interest and I um, remind everyone of course that your uh, contacts details uh, will be in the post in the bio on YouTube on my website I mean there's no way to miss it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I normally ask my guests if there's, uh, uh, apart from the words we um, mentioned at the beginning, another word or uh, a quote that is a bit like um, a reference for you in your professional or private life. The word that's always uh, in my forefront is thrive. Yeah, I love that. (laughs) And thrive no matter what. Sometimes it gets ugly out there. Sometimes you're really up against the wall and you would wonder how can a person thrive if you're, you know, stressed out, burnt out or or ill. Uh, Whatever the external picture of your life may be, it's inside if you feel, what if universe I could thrive in this moment too? Whatever that looks like, is you taking charge of again, your inner self, your inner happiness, um, saying that I'm thriving. <laughs> I may be suffering, but I'm still thriving. Yeah, it's actually, as you said, it's something, it's always this uh, inner uh, power that we have to find it and take out and uh, be in charge. Because only like that, we can thrive, even in yes. uh, difficult moments. Because no Absolutely. matter what, there will be, difficult moments I mean we cannot deny that and we cannot believe that there is anyone in the world having the happy life always every day that's not possible so sometimes we are we are we think we compare ourselves too much to a a not real world really so that's uh, I love also this uh, this beautiful word thrive so I really really thank you uh, for being with us for uh, talking about what you do and the beautiful work you do in your in both your businesses and uh, I'm sure our listeners enjoyed as much as I did thanks a lot I speak to you soon guys and see you soon thank you so much Mara for having me again and uh, it was lovely to have this conversation with you Bye. Bye Bye-bye.